In this video we are going to talk about different shapes in Adobe XD. So shapes are located right here on your left. So you have rectangle, ellipse and polygon and you can click on any of them and simply draw a shape right here inside of your artboard and if I switch from assets panel to my layers panel you can see that it's titled rectangle one because that's the original shape that we drew as you can see it's a rectangle and because it's first it's rectangle one rectangle two three and so on and you can hit Control or command z to undo that selection you can double click right here to change the name so maybe we can call this shape one for example and you can click on the select tool and you can draw it and uh, when you move it around you can see these guidelines and it will show you when you are at the center and all of these numbers are numbers of pixels from uh, these distances so from the top bottom left and right right here in this menu you can see some different options so as i said in the previous videos uh, wherever you click on some of these these options are going to change depending on what you have clicked right here so here at the top we have positioning uh, tools so you can align this to the top you can see what it does you can put it in the middle to the bottom left middle like this so you can hover and see so this will align it uh, center horizontally and this will align it center vertically so basically in the middle and this one is to the right Right here we can, uh, you can see we have repeat grid and we are going to explain that in the future video. And here you have some options when you want to combine different shapes. So if I hit Ctrl D on my keyboard, I can make a duplicate of this shape. I can hold my shift key, select both of them and I can add them. As you can see, there is now one single shape. If I go back with Ctrl Z, you can see we have subtract. So it will subtract that part of this selection. We have intersect, as you can see, it's only going to uh, intersect where those two shapes meet. And you can see right here we have intersection one and we have this same icon as we do right here so that you can know what you have selected for any of these. And finally, we have exclude overlap. So basically it's going to exclude this part when they are overlapping and finally showing you that right here. Let me quickly delete this one and position this in the center. So if we move below, we have component. So you can um, create this shape to be a component and we are going to cover components in a separate video because it's really important part of your Adobe XD workflow. Below that we have dimensions. So we have the width, we have the height and you can simply enter any value you, can, uh, you choose right here. So for example, 500, you can press enter and it's going to expand to 500 in width. We can see the position on the X, Y axis and you can rotate it. So for example, if I type in 45 degrees, press enter, it's going to rotate this shape to 45 degrees. You can also click right here to flip it horizontally or to flip it vertically. And because it's a rectangle, obviously it's going to look exactly the same like so. You can also hover and rotate. You can hold shift to snap into different increments. And you can see uh, all of these dots right here uh, in the shape. If I zoom in a lot closer, you can see that dot right here. What those dots do, you can click on them and simply bring in all of these uh, edges of this shape to make it more round or more straight. Below that we have responsive resize, which is always set to auto and on. And responsive resize is obviously useful when you're designing something that needs to be responsive. So just imagine you're designing a desktop website and you need to create a mobile version of it or the other way around. You will going to use this responsive resize and we're going to um, include it in one of the future videos where I'm going to go just a little bit more deeply just so that you can understand. But basically what it does is going to um, resize all of the elements inside of your artboard when you're getting to a smaller and smaller or bigger or bigger sizes and they are going to correspond with each other depending on where they are placed. So just imagine, for example, you have the text right here. You can make it uh, on mobile to be below here and it's going to uh, reduce the size of these images, for example, if these are the images and it's going to all work really nicely. But as I said, it requires a separate video because it's the topic of its own.
Below that we have opacity so you can lower it right here or you can use the keyboard shortcuts. So for example I can press 1 it's going to lower it down to 10%. If I press 0 it's going to increase it to 100%. Below that we have blend modes. So if you ever use Photoshop you are aware that the blend modes exist in Photoshop for a number of years. But uh, it's just been included in Adobe XD and blend modes are obviously really important if you want to blend something. So just imagine you have image on top of a shape and you want to blend it differently with your design. You can use blend modes and you can click right here. And as you can see, we have a number of these blend modes. All of them basically took from Photoshop. Below that, we have corner radius controls. So we have same corner radius for all corners if we click right here. And you can change all the corner radius uh, values if you select here and press 20 for 20 pixels, for example. You can press enter. And if I zoom in just a little bit closer, you can see that all of the edges are now rounded by 20. And you can click right here and choose different corner radius for different corners. So, for example, you can hover right here to see which one it is. It's top left corner radius, so it's this one. And if I press zero, press enter, you can see that all of the corners are rounded, uh, except for the top left corner. So I'm going to bring all of them down to zero, as you can see right here. And if we move down, we have the fill color. So you can click right here and you can choose whichever color you want. You can lower the opacity of the color right here. So from 100 all the way down to zero, you can click here to explore different color palettes and you can switch between solid color, linear gradient, which is going to go from one point to the other point. And finally, we have radial gradient, which is going to go from the center out. When you choose solid color, you have the option of using the hex code. So for example, if I choose a nice blue color of 3EC6FF, press enter. Now we have this blue color and you can add it as a swatch. You can simply click right here. And whenever you are choosing the color, this swatch is going to be located right here. So you can then simply click on it and it will apply that color to the different selection of your choosing. Below that we have the border. So the border is this border around our shape and you can increase the size of the border. You can add dashes and you can add different gaps between those dashes. So right now it's at one, but if I increase it at 10, you can see that the border thickness has increased. If I click right here, I can change the color of that border. And this is where the color swatches come in handy because you can simply click on it and it will apply that same color right here. But for example, if it shows a bit darker color, darker blue in this case, you can click right here and save that as a different swatch. And now you have completely different design. And now you can play around, for example, 20 once again. And now you can see how that looks like. Below that, we have some other controls. So we have controls for the strokes. So how this shape is going to behave, how it's going to interact later on when you're working on it. So for example, we have inner stroke. And you can, uh, when you install XD, you can simply see what this does. So the dot is going to be uh, on the inner side of the shape. Outer stroke is going to be on the other side of the shape. Center stroke, basically in the center of the shape. Right here we have the butt cap, which is basically a square ending of our shape. We have round cap, if you want uh, these caps to be rounded. And we have projecting cap, which is basically uh, in the middle of the cap, but it's going to be squared once again. Below here we have meter join, round join and bevel join. However, you want all of these dots to join basically. Below that we have the shadow and when I click on it, it's going to create a drop shadow basically. And you can click right here to lower the opacity of the shadow. So you can see when I increase it, you can see how that looks like. And by default, it's at 19% and it's always black, but you can change it. You can click right here and choose this color, for example, to be our shadow. And maybe we can go even a little bit darker. And here you can incru uh, increase the distances. So for example, this is X position, this is Y position, and finally the background blur of that shadow. So if I type in 10, for example, you can see it goes to the right 10 pixels. If I type in 10 right here, it will go to the right and to the bottom 10 pixels. And if I increase blue to 50, for example, press enter, you can see that this insane blur appears out of nowhere, basically. And you can switch it on and off right here. 
and you can use background blur as well. Now background blur is extremely useful if you have background images. So just imagine this is an image. You can include this background blur and it will blur that image against the background. In this case, it really doesn't do anything because it's just a basic shape, but you can play around with this. You can increase the opacity and it will increase the opacity uh, of your image or of your shape. And this will increase or decrease the brightness and this will increase or decrease the amount. And finally, we have mark for export. If you click right here, it will mark it for export and you can easily export this shape later on for developers if that's something you choose. So that's basically it for uh, these shapes. Now let me quickly run through these other ones. So we have the circle. If I hold shift, it will create it evenly. Or if I hold control alt and then draw, you can see how that looks like. Or if I hold control alt shape, shift, it will draw from the center and it will create this nice and even circle. But if I left go of the shift key, you can see how now uh, that looks like. So we delete. And if I click on this one, position it in the center, you can see all of the same commands because it's the same shape, basically just the circle. So you can play around with them right here, except you don't have these commands uh, for a different corner radius because it's a circle and you cannot change basically the corner radius on the circle. And finally, we have polygon tool right here. If I hold my shift key, it will create this triangle. But what's different about this tool is you have this corner count and you have this corner radius. So for the corner count, currently we are at three. That's why we have this triangle. But if I click five and press enter, it will create five different corners and you can reduce the corner radius by simply drawing here and it will create a perfect circle or go the other way around and it will go back to the original shape. Or you can uh, create a different corner radius right here. So press 20, for example, and you can see that it rounded these corners at 20. Same like we did with this one originally. In the next video, we are going to work with the pen tool. So I'll see you there.